Hello, everyone. Welcome to short number three for accounting. Um, so today as well, we are going to do uh, basic terminology for financial accounting, uh, something uh, uh, which we are carrying forward from our short number two. And hopefully we are going to finish the very basic terms of accounting, which every accounting and finance professional should know. So we will finish today and then I will let you know at the end of the recording what we are going to do in the next short. So let's start. Uh, I'm going to share my screen and then I'm going to tell you which terms uh, we are going to study today. So give me a second. Switch home. So today we are going to do the terms. So we stopped in accounting short number two. We were talking about there are two types of assets. So we have non-current assets and we have current assets. So we are going to carry on now with the classification of non-current assets. Now, non-current assets are of two types as well. So you have tangible non-current assets and you have intangible non-current assets. So just as a way of recap, assets are the items which any business own, O-W-N. So if they own something or if they have got the right to use something to generate future revenue, that's known as an asset. Asset are of two types. You have current assets and you have non-current assets. Current assets are the assets which you are going to use for less than one year. So for example, inventory, cash, those are your current assets. And any assets which you are going to use for more than 12 months or one year to generate revenue in the business, that is known as non-current assets like land and building, plant and machinery, furniture and fittings, fixtures, motor vehicles, all those are your non-current assets. Now, non-current assets are of two types. You have tangible non-current assets and intangible non-current assets. Now, I hope you know the English dictionary meaning of word tangible. Now, tangible means something which you can touch, which you can see. So tangible non-current assets are the assets which are physical assets. These are the assets you can touch and you can see. And examples from our list of non-current assets, land and building, plant and machinery, motor vehicle. You talk about furniture and fittings, office equipment, fixtures. All those are our tangible non-current assets. Intangible non-current assets. Intangible means something which is not tangible. So tangible is something which you can touch, which you can see. So intangible means something which you cannot touch, you cannot see. So an intangible asset is any asset which is without any physical substance. Examples will be like goodwill, copyrights, brand names, patents, trademarks, etc. Now, when you talk about goodwill, we will do all these terms later on as well. But goodwill is basically the reputation of the business. Why your customer comes back to you. That's your goodwill. That's intangible. You cannot touch it. You cannot see it. But your goodwill helps you to generate the revenue. Because your customers come back to you. Brand name like Chanel, Versace, Gucci, all those are brand names. Brand name you cannot touch, you cannot see, but people pay a lot of price for buying the products of a brand name. And then you have patents and copyrights as well. So like for any books, you have got copyrights. Uh, that means you cannot, um, like without the prior permission of the author and the publishing house, you cannot use the contents, that's copyrights. And you have patents as well. So all these terms will come later on when we will do accounting for these terms. But for now, intangible assets are the assets without any physical substance. The next term, a very, very important term, it will keep on coming back to you. It's known as an accrual. There is a nickname for this. It's known as outstanding as well. So an accrued expense basically means an expense which you have incurred, but you haven't paid for it. 
so if you receive your electricity electricity bill like you know after 3 months so if you use the electricity for january february and march and then you receive electricity bill in the first week of april that's your accrued expense something which you have incurred something which you have used for something you owe the money to the third party that's known as an accrued expense obviously it's your liability because you owe it to somebody else you have already used uh, the benefit out of that expense you owe it to the third party so it's a liability for you and it's a current liability you will have to pay it within um, one year so that's your accrual also known as outstanding the next one is opposite of outstanding it's like prepayment now prepayment is something which you pay in advance so for example if you rent a house and your landlord wants you to pay the rent in advance that's a prepayment so you are going to get the benefit later on but you have already paid for it so like in uk we get the oyster card to travel in metro so if you uh, top up your oyster card with like 50 pounds uh, that's your prepayment because now you will you have the right to use that oyster card for worth up to 50 pounds of journeys so that's a prepayment it arises before hand where you have paid the expense beforehand and the benefit will come later it's your asset and it's current asset because you are going to use the benefit within one year so an accrued expense or outstanding expense is your liability and a prepayment is your current asset the next term trade receivables or maybe many of you uh, might be aware of the term debtors or debtors now trade receivable is any person uh, to whom you have sold the goods on credit so you sold the goods to those customers but they haven't paid you as of yet <laughs> so it's not the case of cash sales is the credit sales which you have made they will pay you eventually that's your debtors they are your assets because they owe you the money and you have got the right to claim the money from them so trade receivables is the amount which you owe or which is owed by the customers of the business who have bought the goods from the business on credit remember it's a current asset for the business opposite of which will be your trade payables now trade payables also known as creditors as i said it's the opposite of trade receivables trade payables are the amounts which you owe owe to your suppliers so you have bought the goods from them on credit you haven't paid them as of yet so it's the case of credit purchases you will pay them eventually and they are they will be your current liability in your statement of financial position because you owe it to them they are a liability and you will have to pay to them within one year so that will be your current liability always remember trade receivables and trade payables only arise on on or for credit sales and credit purchases if you do all your transactions in cash you wouldn't have trade receivables and trade payables because then everything is settled there and then the next one <coughs> is a trial balance now when you talk about a trial balance trial balance is the list of all your accounts so all the accounts you have prepared like for the whole year at a point of time if you put all your accounts as a list that's known as trial balance and it should always match i'll show it to you so that's how it should look like it's prepared at a particular date so say for example 31st of december you have debits and credits and because of double entry bookkeeping system it's also known as dual aspect and because of that accounting concept your trial balance should always match provided you haven't done any error 
if your debits are not equal to credits, that means there has been some error in your accounting. So you need to go back, check your error, correct it before you can actually start preparing your financial statements. So trial balance is the first step. Taking you back. So when you talk about the double entry bookkeeping system, double entry bookkeeping system basically means for each and every transactions in accounts, for each and every transaction, you will have two entries, one debit and one credit. So for each and every debit, you will have equal corresponding credit. Always, always. And debits on trial balance should be equal to your credits. The next terminology is capital expenditure. Now, when you talk about capital expenditure, it is the expenditure on non-current assets of the business, or you can say this is any expenditure which will help the business for more than one accounting period. So the money you are spending is going to help you for more than one accounting period in generation of revenue. And that's basically non-current assets. And that's known as capital expenditure. So if you buy a motor vehicle, a delivery van for your business, that's your capital expenditure. If you buy a new building, as the office premises, that's your capital expenditure. If you buy a new printer or a new desktop in your office, that's your capital expenditure as well. So any expenditure which will give you the benefit for more than one accounting period or 12 months, that's known as capital expenditure. Opposite of which is revenue expenditure. Now revenue expenditure is any expenditure which is incurred on day-to-day -day running of the business. So everyday expenses like the payment of electricity bill, payment, payment of salaries, payment of water bills, buying the stationery for use in office, that's the day-to-day -day running of the business and that's known as revenue expenditure. So the example which I gave you for capital expenditure, if you buy a delivery van, that's your capital expenditure. But when you buy fuel to run the delivery van, petrol, diesel, whatever, that's, that is revenue expenditure. Is that okay? And that's it for today. You will have short number four now on Saturday in which I'm going to discuss accounting concepts. So there are a few accounting concepts on which, on which we have to base our financial statements. So the other important thing apart from this um, terminology are the accounting concepts. One of which I have already introduced today, which is your double entry bookkeeping system. That's one of the accounting concepts, but we have many more. Uh, so Saturday short will be covering accounting concepts in detail. Thank you very much for listening to me. If you have any doubts, any queries from any of the accounting shots, please put it as comment and I'm very happy to take your queries. Uh, and if you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. Do watch and like my other videos. Thank you. Namaste.